Three, two, one. Oh! Okay, well, just uh, got back from the lake house. Uh, been gone a while and uh, back in the saddle again. And I have with me my grandson, Andrew. Say hello. All right, awesome. All right, yeah, he's here um, helping me run this thing, run this sprayer. Um, as you can see by the size of the weeds, I think we've been gone a little bit too long. Uh, it did take long for this kind of time of year for the, these uh, weeds called kochia to uh, get pretty good height on them. I'm actually traveling over some manure that we had spread. Um, so, and it's a uh, former CRP ground uh, that we took out a couple years ago. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, growth in, especially where the manure is, because that really makes things grow. So, but anyway, uh, but we're putting on a chemical that uh, will burn down pretty fast the kochia for this time of year. Anyway, yes, so we're uh, uh, trying to, to get uh, some things done because uh, we're going to be gone for a couple more days this next week. And uh, then we'll come back and then it'll be uh, getting some of the harvest equipment done. So, but I'm actually spraying on uh, uh, some uh, the ground that we took on the C took out of CRP, which is part of the original homestead where my grandfather homesteaded back in 1912. And uh, this this part here is actually his brother. His brother came up, or my great uncle came up. Uh, back in uh, 1911, homesteaded a 320 and uh, 320 acres, and then encouraged my uh, grandfather to come up and homestead the other 320 on this section. Uh, but my great uncle didn't really care for it after one year, and uh, he said, "Why don't you just take care of my share? Five years, you can you can uh, buy it from me." So. After five years on the Homestead Act, if you made improvements, and actually if you were there about, I think, nine months of the year, it would become yours. And that's what my grandfather did. He got his 320 and then bought this 320. Ended up with uh, 640 acres. Um, but it wasn't quite like the uh, 640 acres from where a lot of you guys are. Uh, if you're in the Midwest or even across the ocean, uh, this is a little harder land, a little tougher land, a uh, low, uh, short soil profile, uh, very narrow, good uh, soil depth. And uh, so it's uh, one reason why we had put it in the CRP. But, and it's also a little bit rough because uh, we plowed it, took it out of the CRP, and uh, we're bouncing, aren't we? Ouch. Your head is uh, is uh, finding out uh, how solid of a mind you have. Anyway, we're uh, gonna get locked on the next path. We've got the headlands done, and now we'll just start sp uh, spraying back and forth. Okay, I think I saw a rabbit jump up, but uh, he ran into an area, so Kobe didn't catch him. So we'll just have to wait for the next uh, rabbit. Fortunately, uh, that rabbit didn't get close enough to attack us, so uh, we're too concerned. But uh, Kobe, what do you think? Hi, Kobe. Are you looking? All right, there he goes. Yeah, I see him out there. Probably oh. He's out there probably almost uh, half a mile now, chasing that rabbit. Yeah, he's getting getting a full workout today. And I don't think there's any social distancing between him and the rabbit, except for probably 400 yards. Uh, I don't think he's gotten close any closer than six feet, so he's, he's doing good. He's staying within the bounds laid out. So we've got another 
uh, part of a load left to do and then also be social distancing away from this field and probably this sprayer for a while so that'll be fine so anyway uh, let's uh, keep rolling and see if we can find Kobe he's tired I'm gonna have to go and help him up can you make it oh you're the you're that tired oh, okay come on let's try it again let's try it again <laughs> Oh, you're tired, aren't you? Okay, let's go. Come on, put your leg up. Okay, put the next one. There you go, I think you got it now. Are you gonna chase the next one? Are you gonna go chase the next rabbit? All right. Well, Kobe, you're gonna have to move over on this other side, because I need to get at that pedal. Come here, another fun time, huh, Kobe? Looking out the window, and something just arrived to the farm. Let's go check out and see what it is. Oh man, look at this thing. All I can say is it's got some yellow on it and uh, some red. What is it? Sweet. We got ourselves a 13 inch, 92 foot, and it's got a conveyor on the bottom, drive over, I believe. This is gonna be fun. We got some nice new bins that's gonna need a nice new auger. Thank you, AGI. Thank you, West Steel, for uh, giving us this opportunity, is all I have to say. And that truck comes with it, right? No, it doesn't. Sadly, it doesn't. But I wish it did. I like, I like that truck already. It's kind of nice. All right, let's unload this thing. Aren't you supposed to be pouring concrete? Yep. Do you guys recognize this guy right over here? So they were nice and brought us donuts today. Do you recognize this guy over here? We'll see you when it's they start going up. Yeah. That guy's fab that. shop came over and they delivered this and guess whose truck this is, is the guy that poured concrete, Jimmy. Yeah, they decided to bring it over. So thanks guys. I think we should take a look at this Westfield auger. So what it looks like they've given us for an opportunity to try, thank you, is they actually have hydraulic controlled so you can swing it out. It actually has a drive over pit, which is conveyor on this end, but then it looks like it's got an auger that runs up to the top. And then you got a 13 inch that goes out this direction over here. Um, they've got a hydraulic winch to lift it up and down, which is sweet. So you really don't have to do any pushing, anything crazy. I love the backbone on this thing. It's really stout. So you don't have, like with ours, what happens is as you're putting it in the bin, you get it set up just fine. Well, as you fill it, it starts to kind of bow and sink downward. So then if you have like, let's just say you're four inches from the top of the spout. Well, if it starts to load up with grain and sink down, it's just gonna squat right on top of the bin and you don't wanna do that. So we always have to have it way above. And then if the wind blows, it starts to sway a little bit and then it goes back down. I don't like that. I wish ours had this backbone instead of cables, but most of them have cables. I love this type of setup, the A-frame. I think that's what they call it because what it is is ours is kind of like a scissor lift and it works awesome, but this I believe has more structure. I would say this thing is pretty stout and simple for the most part, but I actually won't know that until I get to run it. But a 92 foot auger is a little longer than ours. Ours is an 82, yeah, 82 foot. So this is gonna be nice to have a little extra length. Um, we just have to watch our corners when we turn around and we don't hit stuff, but. I guess what are we gonna hit around here? There's a few things we'll hit. But yeah, this is awesome. Um, I think we're gonna have fun this year. And I hope you guys get experience some of these toys and see what the what's out there in the market. If you're looking into augers or other things, maybe let's give you an insight what to buy and what not to buy. All right, let's get back to work, whatever that means. We're standing here, we have an issue. We have to figure out how to fix it. It's me. Well, it could be him, but that's not the, we're not, we'll solve that later. That's, okay. that's not, let's go on that's not a priority one. right now. We'll have we'll other things going. We might have to use that cherry picker and one of the Can-Ams that has the winch on it. I think our pump and our pump house went down. So uh, let's see if we can get that thing out of there. We're going to make ourselves a Can-Am tow truck. Unless Can-Am decides to make one before me, but I think this is going to rock pretty well. 
All right, let's get to work. It's pretty sweet to see that uh, the pea crop is looking phenomenal right now. The wheat crop's looking good. The chickpeas are looking great. In fact, for the conditions, it's just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. We're not really a lot of rain right now. It's kind of like last year, a little over five inches or so, more than last year. But it's been cool weather. It's not very hot out. Um, it's by the saving grace that we're able to have a crop this year. And hopefully we can get it off the field and into the bins. You never know what might happen with hail. You never know what hail, or not hail, but fire. And uh, we don't want that right now. So what we got going on here is the pump inside the pump house that we use to fill up the trucks on the side here and also to pump it over the hill into our farm, something happened with it. I turned it on the other day and it was pumping over on the other side. And then a couple hours I went to check on the cistern to see how it was doing and very little water was coming out. I knew something was up and I was like, oh no, the hose blew. It's probably filling up with water in here. Great. Came over here, opened the door and I smelled something not great. Don't know what happened with it, but the pump won't kick on and it's seized apparently. So what we gotta do, and I wish we decide this or design this beforehand. I wish we put a little hanker right here that we could put a crane and lift that pump out of there. It's fairly heavy. I've pulled it out before and I think I'm gonna work smarter and not harder. So we're gonna take the cherry picker, stick it in here in this little hole. We gotta run the winch from the side by side all the way down into that hole, hook onto it and pull it out. Sounds easier than it actually is, but yeah, it'll work out pretty well. Now, before we take the cherry picker and put it inside here, I'm gonna crawl down, disconnect the pump, make sure everything's ready to go, cause getting in and out of this way is getting kind of a hassle with that cherry picker in the way. Crawl down with the pipe wrench and away we go. Now that we're inside here, there's a little bit of water in here cause something's been leaking. It's either out of that pump housing and I uh, got a hole in it. We actually had to pump this out a little bit because it was kind of full of water. So I got those, my wonderful little uh, boots on. They're cute, aren't they? Uh, you can't see them. Anyways, this right here is what we got to get out of here. It's got some weight to it. So we're going to try to, like I said, work smarter and not harder. So I disconnect a couple lines, bring it over here. We'll bring the cherry picker in, bring the cable in and use the winch to pull it up. Then we can take it back to the shop and find out exactly what happened to it. Okay, I got, uh, we drew straws. I won. Scott's leg arms is down in the hole. And all I have to say is, uh, oh well. You know, on second thoughts, I'm gonna just manhandle this thing out of here. We don't need to go to all the work of trying to get that cherry picker in here and use the winch. We'll just do it the right way. This is work harder than smarter, so let's just make this happen. All right. And stretch, we're good. Let's do this. So this is the pump right here that we just pulled out. Here's the other one we have, that's a smaller one. This is meant for a little higher pressure. This is meant for volume. We ended up not using this one. We end up using this one because it produces a lot of volume and it pumps it over the hill, but something happened in here, I'm guessing. I don't think it's electric motor. So we got to look at it. What do you have to say? We're all pumped up about it to get it back in because uh, I need a shower. Took the pump housing off. We found a rock inside of it. But I actually took this out uh, two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago because it was leaking. And I took the welder and welded a uh, patch right there on that cast housing. You're really not supposed to weld on cast, but I did anyways and it held. And we're looking at the impeller. You know what, we'll probably just end up getting a whole new, you know, pump. Electric motor seems like it's not seized. I don't think that's the problem. But uh, yeah, now we gotta figure out what we wanna do and see if they got parts. Let's call around and see what happens. We found that rock in there and it could have been a combination of a couple things. The rock could have stopped it from spinning, which then made the pump heat up or the electric motor heat up and uh, fry this thing. Or the rock had nothing to do with it and there was a leak in there, filled it up and this thing actually had a little bit of water in it. So when I kicked it on, let it run, it was running, but then it started shorting itself out. So we plugged it in, 
that electric motor's junk. Not gonna work. We'll have to get a new one, but for right now, what we'll end up doing is we're gonna take this pump system right here, which is more of a high pressure pump. It doesn't have a lot of volume, but it'll get us by for a little bit. We're gonna plumb this into the system so we can run water from the pump house to our farm, and then we'll just have a spout uh, coming off the pressure of the city, and that'll fill the water trucks right now until we get a pump ordered. So I gotta go over here and uh, take off a couple fittings off the old pump that I don't need, and um, do a little bit of planning, I guess we can say. Well, that's what my dad's doing right now. He's the planner, I'm the doer. The little pump is back down in here. I gotta tie it up to the T, tighten up that fitting, and then I gotta put a rubber hose from here to the other one and a rubber hose from there to there, and then plug it in and away we go. Wow, I finally get to look down on leg arms. I hope he doesn't spit, because I don't need that right now. <laughs> This side's the suction. This over here fills our trucks when we have them parked outside, and then this line here actually runs all the way back to the farm. No leaks so far. I guess it's time for me to get out of here, and we'll try it. Well, so far, no leaks. I don't see anything, and it's running. That's a good sign, right? I'll get us by for a while. Well, it's back together. We're gonna head back to the farm and see how much water is actually going out the other end into our cisterns, but uh, all that matters, it'll just keep slowly filling the cisterns and then we can decide on what we wanna do with uh, another pump. All right, let's get going. Hi, I'm Leg Arms. And I'm Lady Leg Arms. And we have something that involves a special something for you guys to see. What do we have? It's this thing right here. What thing? This thing. This thing? Not the Can-Am. Oh, it's pretty sweet. No. <gasps> it's a bowling ball cannon. If you guys have not seen this bowling ball cannon in action, there is a video on this bowling ball cannon, and I built it a few years back. Actually, it's more like almost 10 years ago. But we need this thing to reveal what color our child is going to be. Is it going to be pink, blue, clear? Probably green. I say we go with clear. Clear? It's going to be clear. With a hint of cherry. But, uh, yeah. No, this is going to be awesome. So we're going to use this bowling ball cannon. We're going to put powder in it. We do not know what color powder it is. My brother knows, and he's going to put the powder in there with the bowling ball, and then we're going to launch it, and you guys will get to experience whatever it's going to be. So this is a surprise for us. Hopefully it's a surprise to you guys, and start putting your boats on, like, what it's going to be. Gender reveal Walker Farm style. Yeah, Nick already did this once, so we need to keep this going on again. It's a tradition now. It is a tradition. Say that again. Tradition. T -t tradition. 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 Tra tradition. There you go. So we, <laughs> we you want to go run? Okay. So my lovely wife has created a party with many, many people. We had hot dogs, burgers, deer burgers, by the way. And uh, there's a group of people over here, lots and lots of kids. And they're going to be here to enjoy this opportunity with us and find out what we're going to have. Mm -hmm. Any words of wisdom? Uh, stay in school. <laughs> How can they stay in school when school's closed down? Oh. Seriously. <laughs> So yeah, when we're ready, we're gonna tell them all. We'll all go over there and stand next to the cannon. And uh, I think I'm gonna have my lovely lady pull the string first. And we'll find out what it's gonna be. Awesome, guys. <laughs> We have it done! Three, two, one! Oh! Are you happy? Yes. I'm happy. We got a boy. So, my brother has a girl, two boys. We have a girl. And two boys, apparently. And two boys, apparently. 
This is awesome. Yay. What do you think, Roscoe? He's uh, not that amused right now. You got competition? Is that a cannon? Is that a cannon? Did it go boom? Boom. Boom. The cannon went boom, huh? <laughs>